Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Richard, founder of Short Term Rental University and professional real estate developer. Today I want to share with you a $55 million initial investment that Airbnb is making in a related but different space, corporate housing. And so why are they doing that and what are the implications for us as hosts? So let's get to it. So let's just give you an overview and the facts. The facts are Airbnb just invested $55 million in a related or ancillary business model focused on corporate relocation, 30 day stays or longer. They could have built it themselves, but that actually wouldn't work for them because they want speed and they want scale and they want to get started immediately. So they invested their treasure trove. They've got billions of dollars to invest. They invested $55 million into Zeus. And here's some facts about Zeus. I'd never heard of Zeus, but I'm astonished to find out that in four years, they've got $100 million of revenue. They've increased their revenue in 2019 by 300% alone. They have 250 employees and more than 2,000 homes under management. Their business model is traditionally known as rental arbitrage, where they partner with landlords, they request one month free rent, and then they'll typically take a $4,000 a month unit and try and re-rent it out at $5,000 or more. And basically what that translates into is $16,000 worth of profit per unit, per year, which sounds really good if it was risk-free, but there are some risks and we'll get to that a little later. So that's what's going on and I'm just amazed at how fast they're growing, how much money Airbnb is spending to get them like the scale and the speed of entry immediately. And the question remains, what other ancillary business models will they invest in in the future? And let's try and position ourselves intelligently. So I'd like to share with you some of my thoughts and why is Airbnb doing this? Well, first off, their technology and their platform is becoming omnipresent. It's like ubiquitous. It's everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. People are familiar with it. It's growing really quickly. And so now what they're trying to do is as fast as possible, use similar methodology and technique to accommodate travelers in a variety of different places. So we saw Airbnb's playbook when they started to buy boutique hotel companies and bought Hotel Tonight. And that was really like a warning sign that they're going to start using their capital to make really strategic investments where they see the opportunities before others do. And so the fact that they're now investing in corporate relocation and corporate housing just really tells us that Airbnb is going for overnight stays both in hotels and in Airbnbs where you're living like a local into now corporate housing for 30 days or longer where you're no longer living like a local but you're living like a workforce housing employee that's been relocated. And they're starting to think about their platform and their access, they have 7 million different like guests staying on their platform, trying to meet them in a variety of ways. It's not enough to just meet them now when they vacation or when they travel for business, but how about when they get relocated and what other opportunities exist, right? This isn't the end of it. This is really just the beginning. A $55 million investment in a $205 million post money valuation company. This is just like really small potatoes. It sounds really big and it's really competitive relative to mom and pop hosts like you and I, but relative to like real institutional money, real institutional real estate opportunities, this is just the beginning. So what does this mean for hosts and entrepreneurs and just like business in general? And the first thing I would say is in every business opportunity that we've ever seen, once somebody has initial success and they own a space, in order to get more land grab and grow bigger faster, they try and find ancillary services and ancillary opportunities. And some of them succeed and some of them fail, but that's like the experimentation as they continue to grow and grow. So like, I'm not at all surprised. I wouldn't say that I knew it was gonna happen in corporate, but I do think that there's a real opportunity here for Airbnb and for hosts across the world to recognize that there is a melding of like the traditional long-term rental, 12 months or more from overnight, now we're going to 30 days and maybe 12 month leases become 11 and maybe more buildings start to offering monthly flexibility. And so like the entire way that people live and sign leases and travel is being redefined. We're 10 years into something that could take 20, 30, 50 years to evolve. So we don't know exactly how it will work, but we are certain that there's a lot of capital there's a lot of profits, there's a lot of opportunities, and there's big players investing really quickly with one common theme, which is scale matters. And now as hosts, 
if we're playing in that space and we have access to that capital, I suggest you raise as much money as possible and scale as quickly as possible because that door may be closing. You may find yourself unable to raise capital if your competitor raised it before you or at a lower valuation or less capital. But we've seen this time and time again in anything. Look at the industry, look at the internet industry, look at the online commerce industry. Just when there's a real land grab and capital is being invested in size, you want to grab it while it's available because what ends up happening is the door closes and it's no longer available. But the question really becomes, what about the smaller players? What about the people that don't have a hundred million dollars of revenue and haven't grown 300% or have access to Airbnb in their $55 million investment? Well, we have to do things differently. It's really hard to compete in that same space. And I've said earlier in this video and on other videos that there is risk in rental arbitrage. There's risk of competition, right? Like I wouldn't want to have five units in this building when $55 million is being invested in a building across the street or Airbnb is developing a 48 unit tower and everything there is going to be listed. So we know that there's massive changes and there's a lot of money coming in and the rate of growth is like on an upward trajectory. We're going to start to scale faster and faster. Competition is coming. So rather than try and compete and stay ahead of like that big influx of money and the plain generic thousands of units, $100 million, like I personally can't compete on that. I think I do what I do really well, but if I don't have $55 million and my competitor does, I'm at a disadvantage. And rather than fight that fight and battle and get frustrated, I'm going to fight a different battle. I'm going to focus on something completely unique and I'm going to do something that that $55 million can't compete with, right? Like I'm going to offer a different experience, a different look, a different feel, and we're doing different businesses. We're using the same platform, but my business isn't competing with 30-day stays on the Zeus management platform, and yet traditional rental arbitrage is competing on that. So just think about where you are positioning yourself, how you're spending your daily activities, and is that sustainable on a go-forward basis? And if it's not, and we've said this in other videos, don't just quit and like fold up shop and move on. If you're a really good host and you love hosting and this is something you want to do, it's okay to pivot and reposition, maybe exit what you've been doing and focus on the opportunity set on a go forward basis, which I firmly believe is doing the living like a local for locals, by locals, using unique experiences, unique like differentiating factors and attracting your tribe. That's really hard to compete at scale by definition it's unique and one-off. It's not about scale and $55 million and $100 million you know, of revenue. We're doing the exact opposite. We're playing to our strengths and letting the big boys fight it out, compete, and there's gonna be winners and there's gonna be losers, but I want us all to win in where we can, and that's going to be using our strengths to our advantage. So to be clear, I'm not against rental arbitrage. It's just not where I think the best opportunities are for me. And I also think that the runway is really short, like it's working now and it may continue to work for the foreseeable future, but it won't work indefinitely. And the reason is we've seen this in many different investments. So I always use like what's happened in the past to inform my decisions about what's going to happen in the future. And there's a thing in rental arbitrage, which is called um, duration mismatch. Doesn't sound like much, but I've seen time and time again, hedge funds blow up when they've got duration mismatch. So this is only a matter of time until some people feel some pain, even without clauses in the so on. But here's what happens. If you go ahead and you sign a 12 month lease or a 12 year lease or whatever length of time lease for a fixed rate, and then you're basically bundling that up and repackaging it and selling it nightly or monthly in this case with Zeus, uh, that works while it's working, but if there's too much competition and you can't rent it out on those shorter durations, you're on the hook for a long period of time. You're trying to repackage it up and resell it into shorter periods of time. If those shorter periods of time become less profitable or they go vacant and your place is empty, you still have that liability. You still have that lease payment irrespective of what's happened. So if you have an out clause and you can say, well, if my business deteriorates and I can get out, that's great. But if you're looking for an out clause because of regulatory reasons or you know something fundamentally changing, I'm not sure that your out clause protects you from increased competition or low demand. Right? And yet you are on the hook. So you may have to file uh, bankruptcy on that particular unit or building, or you may find that it's no longer profitable and now you're spinning your wheels for no profits. But it's not something that is risk free. If you understand the risks and you're being compensated for the risks, that's fantastic. But if you don't understand the risks 
or worse yet, you're not being compensated accordingly, then that's a problem and I just owe it to you, my viewers, to understand this duration mismatch and why there's some risk inherent in what seems relatively straightforward and risk-free. So in closing, this is a good news, bad news story. The good news is there's tons of opportunity and there's fast moving things happening. There's new ideas, new concepts that are being introduced using the technology and platform. And the reason that it exists is also a good news story. People are using the platform for more and more things and want more and more opportunity to use Airbnb in shorter term stays and not sign a one year lease. So it's a really good news from a demand perspective. It's kind of a bad news depending on where you've positioned yourself or how you're currently operating. But there's also good news at the end of that tunnel too, which is that you can reposition. You don't have to be married to your existing business model forever. In fact, I encourage you to think about it, pivot, take some action. I filmed a video not long ago that it might be the best time to sell. Real estate market remains really strong and on an upward trajectory. We're really long in the uh, economic cycle. So if you're not positioned properly, now's a really good time to reposition for 2020. I'd love to hear your comments below. Please go ahead and like the video if you found this helpful. And as always, I'm going to encourage you to subscribe. Thank you, friends. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks so much for watching. But I want to share with you something that's really fantastic. My team and I have been solving one of my problems. You know I'm all about building a brand and the single best way to build that brand is to develop a relationship with your clients and you want to get started sooner. So what I did for myself was create my own website tool, one click, and I have my own website. It's customized for me four different templates to choose from. It's absolutely gorgeous and one click, anyone can do it. And what this allows me to do is to develop relationships with my clients. The sooner the better. You don't want to delay and get started in six months or in two years. Do it now in 2020, get your best foot forward and start to own those relationships. So go ahead and click in the description below to be notified upon release. January 2020, we're releasing it to the waitlist only first at the best price ever. So if you want to take control of your financial destiny, click below. One click later, you got your website tool.